Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to make a saltwater lure. A lure that looks like this. This is a pilchard. Pilchards are sometimes called manhaden, and then they're in the family of the sardines and herrings. And sometimes they're eaten, but mostly they're eaten by fish. They swim in just about any ocean, and they're great bait. So this is my version of what a pilchard will look like, at least the one we're going to make. Originally I was thinking that I wanted this to be a twitch bait, something I could walk the dog subsurface. But thinking about it a little more, I think I'm going to put a bib on it and have it be a sort of a sub wake lure. I want it to dive just below the surface and have a nice big action to it. So we will put a dive lip on it. So the angle on the bib is going to have to be pretty steep so it doesn't dive very deep. The tie and eye will be just below the chin. We'll have the belly hook eye in the typical place and then a tail hook eye just short of the tail to give room for a little bit of a fiber tail that will hopefully have some resemblance to the real thing. Now I don't want this to be a big lure. I want it to be sort of a palm sized bait. Something won't be too intimidating out there in the flats but not so small that I can't troll it for bigger stuff. So the body will be right at four inches or about 10.16 centimeters. The depth of the lure body at its fattest point will be one and three eighths inches which is about 3.5 centimeters. So if you're looking down at this lure the thickest part of it should fall right about a third of the way back. So approximately here would be the wide point. And while it looks pretty streamlined and aerodynamic by pushing that wide point a little bit back you actually get a little bit more turbulent formed right after that wide point. Typically a perfectly faired aerodynamic shape will have the wide point much closer to the uh, leading edge. We should be able to get the tail of this lure to loosen up a little bit with some turbulence. And that widest point will be right at 5 eighths of an inch, which is about 1.6 centimeters. Now I just need to transfer this drawing onto a piece of wood. And I'll be using this piece of camphor that's almost an inch thick and plenty big. And check it out, it still has a little bit of raw edge from where I cut it out of the log. All right, time to trim this down and then put that drawing on this. Alright, that's pretty close. I think we're going to go with that. I'm going to go ahead and draw in where my uh, dive bib is going to go because that's going to be one of the first things I cut. And that's at about 65 degrees. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut that lip slot while I still have nice square edges. All right, nice square cut. Now it's time to shape it lengthwise. Here I'm putting in a center line. This will make it easier to get a nice symmetric shape as I taper it down from the head to the tail. At this point, I need to shave this down to get that contour. But it's more than just that single curve. It's really a compound curve because what I want to do is sort of shape it down so it's narrower on the bottom than it is at top. And then everything gets sort of rounded off and then made to look a little more organic. And obviously not this blocky. Now you can get to this point without the use of all these power tools. I'm doing all that to make this go fast. But you could have easily cut this piece of wood with some hand saws and then shape from here with a razor knife or a carving knife and some sandpaper. You get the same result and the more you practice the better a result you get. That said I'm going to take this to the belt sander and get some of this material off as fast as I can go.
At this point, I already have the shape sort of blocked in and pretty close to the contour lines I put on it. I'm starting to work on shaping the profile looking straight into the lure. And that means narrowing the bottom and the top at the same time. So I'm taking these corners off and taking a lot more off the bottom since I want the bottom to be substantially uh, narrower than the top. I want the lure to be kind of wedge shaped, not exaggerated, but a little bit wedge shaped. And as I get really close to getting round, I'll finish it off by rolling it back and forth on the belt. I usually get a really nice finish. And again, you can do this stuff with a knife and sandpaper, but this is a lot faster. You can see it starting to get there. It's still a little lumpy, but I'll finish what I can here on the belt center, and then I'll go in and finish it all off with a little bit of hand sanding. At this stage in the game, really what I'm trying to do is make sure I have good symmetry. So that if the lure has like a little bit of a fat spot on this side, it should have one on this side. Or I have to take it off. So I'm looking for those weird little humps and ridges and I'm trying to get all those off. And it's looking pretty doggone good. The next thing I need to do is to reinforce this little section here that has a tiny little bridge going over to the main body here. And I want to reinforce that a little bit. So I'm going to put a couple of drops of super glue there to sort of harden that little section of wood and I'm using really thin crazy glue here hoping that it soaks in good and prevents this from breaking off and if I need to I'll sand it back a little bit so the next step before I get it completely perfectly sanded is to carve out the gilt plates and everything I'm going to put here but before I do that I like to put in the eye socket that way I use the eye to sort of align all the parts and make it as symmetric as I can from side to side so let's do that now and the way I find the location of the eye is by first dry fitting an eye on there most of the time I'll know but if I'm using a big eye I really want to dry fit it and make sure it doesn't look sort of too close to the front or too close to the back. It does change the character and the look of the lure if you set it a little too far back. So I usually err on the side of putting it too far forward and that usually looks pretty good anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the center of where that is right there and then I'll transfer it to the other side. And I'll do that with a pencil, just eyeballing that first one. Then I'll take a thin piece of wire and poke it in that mark. Hopefully you can see that. And now by sighting down it, I can set the height of this thing right there. Once I have the height, I can set how far forward or back by looking down on the top of the lure. And there you go. Now I've got them both and I can just drill the socket. And there you go. They'll get a little bit of sanding when I sand the rest of it. And a lot of times I'll freehand everything that I'm gonna carve, the gill plates and everything. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and make a little template just using what I drew on that original template to cut out the lure. And I folded it over onto a piece of wax paper. This way I can cut this out and then peel it off and use it left and right. And to get all the other details on this side, I'll just set it on top of this UV light, if I can find the switch, and I can see the details through. And I'll just trace them in with the white pen and I'll get back to you when this is ready to go onto the lure. So what I'll do is just sketch around the outer edge and then I'll cut again on this inside gill plate and do the same thing. And that should get me pretty accurate on both sides. And that's what it looks like with both of them on there. And with it all traced out, nothing left to do but to do this simple carving. And hopefully it'll come out pretty nice, but spoiler alert, it's gonna be covered with some foil. That's got it pretty close. Of course, I got a lot of sanding to do, but I'm pretty happy with that. I'll get back to you when it's all sanded smooth. Let's go ahead and drill the hole for the tie on eye. And I've got to do this really carefully because the front end is kind of delicate right now. Once the dive bib goes in though, all that stuff will be reinforced. Let's go ahead and drill the hole for the um, belly hook. And I like to put my belly hooks as 
far forward as I can without having that hook get hung up on the bib or the line. So right about there is about right. That's plenty. And now I'm gonna cut the uh, slot so I can put a tail in it. And I am gonna put a dorsal fin in it, so I'm gonna cut a slot for that too. And I'll go ahead and glue it in before I actually shape the profile. All right, that'll do it. I didn't want to make it too big, so it wouldn't be too delicate and break off. But I do have the grain going that direction, so it should be pretty tough. All right, pretty happy with that. Looking pretty good. Really does look like a pilcher. Now we've got to figure out how much weight to put in this so that it's just barely floating in salt water. To do that, I need to know how much weight it's going to be on it. So I need to make the hook eyes and the tie and eye, and I'll be twisting those out of this 174 pound stainless steel leader, and I'll just cut three pieces about three inches long. Bend each one of them into a U, and then I'll use these safety wire twisters to do the actual twist. And that's what it looks like afterwards. I just need to do the next two. All right, now we can go on to doing the weight calculation. So to figure out how much weight to put in, I first need to know what the volume of this lure is. And I can do that by weighing the lure because I have the density of the camphor that I use. I just worked that out by measuring the volume of this little cube and the weight. And I've got 13.03 grams of lure body. So to get the volume of this camphor lure, I just take 13.03 and divide it by the density. 377. And now we've got 34.5 or 34.6. That's the volume of the lure. And because water is one gram per cubic centimeter, I know this needs to weigh 34.56 grams to be just be suspending in fresh water. So with all the hardware, that includes the hooks, the split rings, the twist eyes, and the bib. We're at 17.54 grams. So I need to add lead to get it to around 34 grams. So that gets me to exactly 33 grams, but I'm pretty confident I'm going to be adding a little more than a gram in foil, epoxy glues, and the uh, paint and finish, and not to mention the eyes. So I'm pretty confident that we'll end up just over 34 grams, or just about sinking in fresh water, which should mean it'll be just barely floating in salt water, which is what I want the slure to do. Usually this kind of calculation works out pretty well. So I'm going to pretend I never get it wrong, and I'm just going to do it and we'll see at the end what it looks like in the test tank. All right, it's the next day and I left my most hated part of this uh, for today because I just really dread having to drill big holes in a lure I just shaped and sanded. But it's gotta be done. We gotta get all this lead in here and hopefully we'll have it right. First, I'll drill some pilot holes, just a little smaller than the uh, giant holes I'm gonna have to drill. <laughs> The way I'm doing this is I'm going to stack two of them right at the center. The other big ball will go up the front and then the smallest ball will go in the back. So smallest hole first and I minimize the trauma here. And now for the two big ones. These got me a little nervous. And it's got to be deep enough for two of them. So I'm really digging in there. And then the last one, All right, that should have it. Drop one in there, and then two of them in this one. Hopefully I got it deep enough, because if not, I'm in trouble. There you go. Whew. Just a matter of gluing them in and covering those holes up. And as usual, I'm gonna fill them in with some UV resin. And what I do is I just do thin layers, and then I set those layers quickly, and then I just keep building it up until it's rounded, and then I'll sand it back. And I'll get back to you when it's all sanded nice and smooth. If you look 
really closely at the scales on this lure. They're actually foil scales. Put them on in strips. I haven't done this to a lure in a while, but I'm going to do it to this one. So before I start actually putting scales on there, I want to put a sort of a mask of foil because the scales will go from the gills back and I'll freehand an arc where that face plate will end. None of these cuts have to be perfect because we're really just laying this in to form a little mass and the edges won't matter. And just working the wrinkles in slowly with some patience, you could usually get them all worked in. And I'll trim a little bit of overhang on the mouth so I won't have any wrinkles there. But otherwise, that's looking pretty good. I'll get back to you when I got the other side done and we'll be ready to put the scales on. That's what it looks like. Of course, this is just the beginning. Now we're going to need to cut out the little strips of scales. And of course, we just use regular tape, some scalloping shears, and you can see it cuts like little half moon and a regular pair of scissors. And this takes a little patience. Usually I'll play a little music. First you cut the uh, scallop shape, then you cut out this strip of scallops, trying to keep just a, a flat strip behind the scallops that's only about a sixteenth of an inch. So that can get a little bit challenging. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere between a sixteenth and an eighth works pretty well. You have to start at the very back and you want to make sure that your strips are long enough that they go from the center point on the top to the center point on the bottom at the widest point. So I'm going to cut a bunch of these things out. All right. Cutting these out takes a little time. I'll get back to you when I'm ready to start putting the scales on. So before I start sticking this stuff on, I like to wipe down with a little alcohol. And I'll put in a, like a, just a makeshift center line on top and on bottom. It doesn't have to be perfectly in line with the center. It's just a spot where you're going to be calling center to cut your uh, scales off at the bottom and the top. I find the scales lay down a lot better that way. If you try to wrap it all the way around, you end up with a lot of uh, little wrinkles. And you have to start at the back and lay your scales facing back. And in the back here, all you're going to get is a couple of scales down. And I just cut it off at the center line and then burnish it on to be sure it's stuck. And then the next one offsets a half a scale. This takes some patience, there's no doubt about it, but the results usually are pretty sharp. So the beginning is usually pretty humbling. It takes a little while to get the scales up here far enough to make it look good and seem worthwhile. But I'll get back to you as I make some progress. And if you're wondering how, how to figure out how many strips to cut, they cover about a sixteenth of an inch each strip. And that comes out to be about one and a half millimeters. All right, that's about an hour's worth of work and I'm ready to go have lunch. Should be able to get it done pretty quickly. Certainly a lot faster than carving these things. All right, that's got it. You can see it's fully clad. It's a full metal jacket on this bad boy. All the way down, even the small ones on the head. It's a good question whether it's worth it to do this kind of thing for a one-off lure design like this. Maybe if you were gonna make a mold, but for a single lure, eh, it's a lot of work, but it sure looks nice. All right, next step is to glue in all the hardware and then we can start painting. We're ready to paint. I've got this thing kind of uh, masked off so I can just paint the fin because I want that to be painted silver. But first, I'll put a base coat of white on it before I put the silver on it. All right, now we're going to go with the silver. This is a really nice iridescent silver. All right, there you go, silver fin. Now my plan is to go ahead and paint it as closely to this photograph as possible. So I'm gonna put those little stripes of like skip dots across uh, the top. And then the only other color I'm gonna use is gold or a transparent yellow, so it'll look gold. And then I'll give it a, a misting of transparent green on top to give it that green top look, kind of a classic pilchard. So I've got this thin piece of plastic that I poke little holes in with the tip of a soldering iron and I'll just be laying it on here and shooting through those holes. All right, I'm going to be starting off with moss green. This is one of the Createx Wicked colors.
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and glue on the, uh, the bib and it's gonna go like that. I just gotta put a little droplet of crazy glue in there, drop it in, and then I put a little bead of UV resin all the way around. And I'll set it with a UV flashlight. And I'm gonna glue the tail in the same way. I'm just gonna put some uh, UV resin in that slot, squeeze it in there, and then set it with the UV light. And if anything oozes out, I can wipe it off before I set it with the light. All right, and then it's time to take the tape off. Sometimes you lose a little more than you expect when you pull the tape off and hopefully we won't lose too much. Pretty happy with that. Might trim a little more, but I think that's good. It's time to clear coat this thing. Whenever I do these kind of scales, these 3D scales, I like to put at least two coats of uh, clear resin just to fill in everything and make it look a little more uniform. So this UV resin is a, a new one that I bought, but it's a little bit thinner. It's got a lower viscosity, which I like in these cooler months. It also means that the uh, bubbles kind of come out of it a little more readily. So let's go ahead and get it, this thing in the chamber. Turn the lights on. And in about an hour when this is set, I'm going to just wipe it down with some alcohol and give it another coat. And then hopefully this beautiful sunshine will hold out and we'll be able to get out in the water and get some underwater shot. All right, we've got a beautiful sunny day out there. I don't want to waste any of it because it'll probably get cloudy by afternoon. So let's go ahead and get this thing out. And it really has come out really nice. And to give those seams on the top and on the bottom a nice cover of clear coat, I went ahead and gave it three clear coats. I've added some weight to it, but the clear coat weight doesn't bother me too much. And I definitely erred on the side of going a little light with our weight, remember? So if you'll remember, our target was somewhere around 34 grams, a little more than 34 grams. We started off with 33 grams, including all the hardware. So this is gonna be substantially more. Remember, I put all that foil on. So let's see what it weighs. First, the hooks and split rings, and then the lure itself. And look at that. We're all the way at almost 40 grams. The question is, what's the actual result? And we're not gonna know that until we stick it in the tank. Let's do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and install the hooks. All right, hooks are on. Let's go ahead and put it in the water. Now, last night before I closed up shop, I added salt to this water to create a seawater. And the ratio is about 35 grams of salt to one liter of water. And after it's fully dissolved and sits for a while, it gets nice and clear. Let's see what happens in salt water. Pretty nice and buoyant. Let's see if it's not too buoyant. Wow, I'm surprised. It actually comes up a little faster than I thought it would. I kind of like the way it sits and has the little tail fin sticking out of the water. Before we go out and test it in the water, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's been giving me suggestions for lure builds. Keep them coming. It really does inspire me. It helps. Sometimes I do just stop coming up with ideas. And if you've watched this video this far, give me a thumbs up. You must be getting something out of it. And subscribe if you haven't. It's free. Let's go down to the lake. All right, I'm ready to test this thing. And I forgot my sunglasses, so I'm gonna have to put up with a lot of squinting. Can't wait to get my saltwater boat going again and get this thing in the water. If you haven't seen the video that's showing up on the screen right now, you should check it out. And I'll see you guys on the next video.